Kia koutou. Um, ko Rob Holmes tōko ingoa. Um, good afternoon. Um, my name is Rob Holmes and I run the digital product and operations team here at Te Papa. Um, we've got about 20 minutes um, to tell you a bit of a story, but we're very much aware that it's about this time of the afternoon, concentration levels get a little low, they can drop pretty dramatically. So we'll, move, we'll be moving pretty quick through a whole bunch of content. And just for your benefit, we've mixed in some crude and potentially cringeworthy metaphors. Um, and I'm going to start with a punchline, so spoiler alert. Um, we've created a platform that we are about to open source. It's a platform that we use to create um, digital interactives and labels, and we hope some of you will consider using it too. Um, we're running a stand upstairs at Te Papa, so if you want to find out more about the platform, we'd love to talk to you. Come and see us in one of the breaks. Um, it's been a very busy year for digital at Te Papa. Um, since the last NDF, we've built cross-functional teams with a bunch of new recruits. Um, these include product owners, scrum masters, UX designers, UX researchers, you heard from Mike um, previously, developers. These people have come from all corners of the digital industry. And they've brought with them experience building award-winning digital products, including simulations, games, and they've built them within New Zealand and overseas. They've come from the BBC, from Kiwi Bank, from Radio New Zealand, and a variety of educational organizations. Um, but these people, like me, are new to De Papa, sorry Mike, um, and new to the sector. And while we were all really excited about joining the magical world of a museum. We also rapidly found we had a lot to learn or relearn. And I did check before using the photo that Mike was presenting before me, not after me. Um, the green screen is part of Hena Toru, a lab built by our learning innovation team, a magical world of VR, AR, MR, large 4K touch tables, 3D scanning, 3D printing, and more. But we also encountered a world where digital looked like this, um, or looked like this, or like this. Now, and this one's a climate change um, interactive from the very early days of Te Papa. Now, I'm not suggesting these products are broken. They were absolutely cutting edge in 98. These were some of the first touch screens anywhere, and they predate the iPhone revolution by about a decade. Um, they have done and continue to do great service, and to be honest, I think they've aged incredibly well. Um, and they are kept alive by an exceptionally talented and dedicated team. But under the hood, vintage digital products are generally much harder to maintain than a vintage car. The inner workings are often a black box, and those black boxes have support contracts which expire. And to add to the challenge, the products on the floor at Te Papa have been developed by a variety of different vendors using a variety of different technologies, and few of them are, are use open standards. Um, so little wonder, I guess, that there's a wide variety of user interface design patterns and that it hasn't been possible or affordable to keep the interactives consistent. And the reality is that the problem is often worse than just a lack of consistent user experience. Um, this, for example, is not a screen you want your users seeing ever, even if they are Windows fans. Um, so as we look to create new interactives, such as this touchscreen for the Depahi Metal mini exhibition or hotspot as we, we know them here, um, or a bigger batch of interactives for the recently opened exhibition for Karonga Fakata, or for other upcoming large exhibitions, um, we were thinking about how we could do it so that it was fast and efficient. But we knew we had to also avoid the problems we'd seen with these previous products. We clearly needed to do things differently. And while we needed to produce products which offered the latest and greatest user experience, who doesn't want one of these? Um, we even, want, even more importantly needed to create and own a factory or a platform 
with a focus on processes and components to speed up production and improve quality, and which focused on the monitoring and analysis of product performance in the field and the capability to support and enhance products well beyond day one. And finally, we wanted to ensure that we retained the IP and the assets we generated. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Richard Hulse. Uh, some of you will know me from my previous work at RNZ, where I built and ran the website until October last year. I started at Te Papa in January this year. Uh, with a fresh challenge, which Rob's just outlined, which was basically create a Tesla-like factory at Tapapa. Um, one of the things I had to do when I got here is start listening. As a product owner, the most valuable skill that you can have is listening to the voice of your customer. One reason was that I came from broadcasting, quite a different field. Uh, glam sector wasn't so familiar, and uh, of course I had a lot to learn. The other was that, according to Peter Drucker, only those in the process actually have the information needed to improve that process. Now, in this case, my customers were not customers on the floor. They were actually internal customers, so the digital producers at Te Papa and other exhibition stakeholders. So I listened a lot and wrote a lot of notes, several books worth. And after a few days, a week or so, I started to join some dots up and started getting an understanding of what the problems were and particularly what controls were in place in the current process. So these are often unspoken uh, controls. They're rules that stop the organisation churning out material that is of a poor standard or broken. Uh, one of the things that I did during this is that I, once I'd formed a theory of a, of a process that might work, I started sort of pitching that in story form as a narrative in small pieces to various people and um, then on their feedback adjusting it so that each iteration I would be updating my story with improvements that I'd pinched from everybody else. It went through quite a few iterations, but what I was doing was building foundations so the foundations are very important in any system. The, the primary foundation that we have here, and I think Mike's probably mentioned it, is the digital language system. So when we do a piece of user research, we discover a, uh, a foundational principle uh, or a pattern, then we can codify this in this document and then it is available to recycle and reuse. So it means we don't have to uh, we don't have to test stuff again, and I'll give you an example of that uh, in a minute. The other thing was a whole bunch of design principles. These were things that sort of came out through the conversation, things like modularity, off-the-shelf, stability, uh, reusability, accessibility, multilingual, uh, built for the future and for change, particularly. Um, one thing we wanted to do is build on web technologies, HTML5, CSS, and JavaScript, and make those our primary toolkit. The reasons were flexibility, speed, and them being, of course, open standards. Uh, we use a DPDF here, the Digital Product Development Framework. Have I got that right, team? Yep. <laughs> Lots of acronyms. Uh, and part of that is developing a lean canvas for the product. Um, of course, the key thing in the lean canvas is the elevator pitch. And um, the idea is that you have to get in at level one, and by level three, you have to have got, this, got the elevator pitch out to your manager. And the one for this product is a little bit long, but it's for staff who need to create and maintain engaging digital experiences for museum audiences. The digital experience system is a platform and set of processes that accelerates the creation, publication, and rapid update of digital experiences. Unlike to Papa's current solutions, this system provides audience insights and facilitates rapid production, consistency, and continuous improvement across all the deployed digital experiences. So that's a pretty high bar. 
We started out uh, by building a few interactives. Um, now, a few things at this point. Um, this new process obviously had to sit alongside existing Te Papa processes such as writing and video production. Uh, the existing processes were stable and obviously we didn't want to disrupt those while we're working on our new digital processes. Um, this process is designed to adapt over time, so we're using Agile Scrum for our design and development processes, and we have a uh, retrospective every two weeks, so we basically build any improvements back into the system, any problems that we uh, find, we try to solve those also. And user experience discoveries are codified back into the digital language system so they can form the basis of future work. So we started out using a framework called Marco. No one's, has anyone heard of it? A couple of people, the people who worked at Tapapa. So um, this is a templating framework built by eBay and we built a couple of standalone interactives with this. We learned a lot, but we decided not to com continue with that technology uh, due to a lack of community and it being a little bit monolithic. It was also very difficult to get contractors to help us who knew the framework. So we pivoted to React.js and uh, decided to how to architect things up front. So deeds comprise of five components. The first is the component suite. So this is reusable components such as video player, uh, an image component that holds an image and can zoom uh, and incorporates all the touch elements that are required for touch screens. Uh, and a language toggle. It's built using React and Redux for the technically inclined, and it can be imported into other projects as a node module. So what do these components look like? This is the Tapahi Metal Interactive, and you can see a home button on the left, language toggles on the top right. Uh, there's also layouts for wording and images. There's an Explore Gallery button, which leads to a gallery and a timeline at the bottom. Now, since I took the screenshot, we've actually changed the Explore Gallery based on research. We found that with no image, few people actually clicked in and explored the gallery, but with the, when we add an image to that, then um, people click through and explore. Uh, another component is what we call the gloss. This is where we use uh, a Maori word in English uh, people can tap on the word and it pops up a little pop-up which says what the translation is and then you can listen to that. So that's now standard uh, fixture in all of our interactives. Uh, the second part is the starter kit. Um, this is a basic sort of framework for, cont for containing the interactive. Uh, it sets out standard directory structures, places for images, video, styles, that sort of thing. The third part is the Deeds Player. This is based on Electron, which is basically a Chrome web browser packaged to run as a standard desktop application. It always runs full screen, and when it starts up it registers with our build system, and it runs the interactive standalone so that Basically, you don't need a network. This was one of the things that the audiovisual guys stressed when I started. The floor has to run with only power. We can't rely on the internet. Um, and it can run on win uh, Windows or Linux. So currently we use Windows on the floor, but we've also built a Linux kiosk running uh, an interactive as a proof of concept. So the fourth part is our build system, which is based on Jenkins. Uh, it takes the code and the assets, such as images and video and so on, packages them into a format that the deeds player requires. And then uh, the last part, the deployer, can then take that package and send it to the device on the floor. Now, I came to, um, to Papa with quite high expectations in regard to deployment. In my first week here, someone came to me and asked the question, do you think we could possibly be able to update content once a week? Um, I came from broadcasting and uh, obviously with a web background and we're updating content dozens, hundreds of times a day. And I said, yeah, I think a week will be possible. Um, 
So prior to deeds, updates were generally done also outside of ours, perhaps uh, every few weeks at most. Uh, but now we can update whenever we want. All we have to do is walk out on the floor with a tablet, make sure no one's around and press the button. So this uh, deployment was done during, uh, during office hours. Now an important part of the platform obviously is analytics. We do go out on the floor and observe the um, interactives being used, but we also collect live analytics. So this is an example of some of the analytics. Time on page, uh, gloss usage, which language is used, which navigation type is used. Um, so we can see that uh, next and previous is the most common, followed by swipe and then uh, the net actual menu at the bottom. And video start, stop, and whether it was ended, it basically ran its full course. So all of this kind of feeds back into, our, into what we design. And uh, if you're interested in analytics in particular, Amos Mann is talking about analytics from a specific exhibition point of view tomorrow at 2.15. The other thing that we've introduced as a bit of a trial was monitoring of our live interactives. Uh, we're using a system called Nodal. It was funded by Museum Victoria in Australia and released as open source. So we've added a few new features to this, including the ability to automatically run our players at startup. Uh, we can monitor the state of the running interactive, so there's a little heartbeat that's submitted every 20 seconds, so we know that the interactive hasn't stopped. And it also reports the version number of the current interactive, which is quite useful for if we deploy to the floor while we're not standing there, we can see that the version number updates. And we also added the reading of UDP commands, which is a, basically is another way of controlling uh, interactives on the floor. Um, Deeds is the product of many hours' work by the whole digital team here at Te Papa, and uh, it's allowed us to reduce cycle time and be more responsive to changing requirements. The last uh, interactive that we built, the Land Wars interactive, which you can see on the right as you walk uh, into where we have lunch and morning and afternoon tea, took about half the time of the previous interactive to build, to build, and it was of similar size and complexity. And that was because we could reuse existing technical components, but in terms of the user interface, um, if you have a look at that interactive, it has the same scrolling gallery pattern that was used for Art Wall. So when we, when we put that to be designed, we said to the designer, use this user interface pattern it's already well tested, you don't have to worry that it's not going to work. Um, and so we've put that on the floor and it, it works great. Um, the other thing was that in the final stages of Ronga Fakata, where we built seven interactives, the last three of them were built in about a week based on existing components and existing uh, designs and styles. Last slide. <laughs> a reminder that we're very keen to, uh, to share more about the Deeds platform and also to mention again that we're currently preparing the code for public release under an open source license. And the aim of that is so that we can lower the bar for other institutions to make this kind of interactive uh, using what we've, we've produced. Thank you very much. Any questions? Questions? Easy crowd, thank you. <laughs> oh, wait, wait for the mic. Oh, it's just because the this has been recorded. Thanks for the presentation, Richard. I'm absolutely fascinated. Uh, how much of the myriad of software you've just shown us is, uh, uh, is open source? How much of it is free? Uh, uh, what are the expenses we can expect if we want to reproduce what you've produced? So we've used only open source libraries in putting this together. So React, obviously, 
um, Redux, and a whole bunch of other libraries. But when we release it, it will be under an MIT license, which is very permissive. The costs that you'll have will be design and integration. Um, the, we will include some examples of how to stitch together the components. Um, so there will be some heavy lifting required. But I guess over time, I'm hoping that we, we or some other institution might come out, out with some kind of generic, kind of uh, white branded, you know, unstyled kind of interactives. That could mean that, um, you know, you've got a home button, language toggles, you know, a basic gallery, and then you can just throw the images in, throw the content in. Not that we throw anything in without thinking, but um, it's just to make, mean that, you know, if, if you have in-house developers, they can use it, but you can also go to your contractors and say, hey, there's this existing framework, we'd like to use it. Um, potentially, they could come back and say, well, it'll do 80% of it, and then you could go and say, well, okay, we'll fund the other modules that are required, and then they could then be open sourced. So hopefully over time, as with most open source projects, I hope it will become more and more useful to the entire GLAM sector. Thank you.